Hello again. I want to talk a little about comping uh, say on a ballad and um, specifically uh, how to connect your chords and how to limit the amount of unnecessary um, voices in your chords and also unnecessary movement around the keyboard. A very common chord progression that you will find in probably hun hundreds of standards is uh, one, four, three, six, two, five, one. Uh, I'm gonna play it in a very basic skeletal form first so you can hear what I'm talking about. Key of B flat. see it so so much in standards this this type of movement so let's uh, let's begin with that and um, I'm gonna play a few examples of how I would get around um, with that chord progression I want to stress that my first example is perfectly um, acceptable because it's got everything you need thirds and sevenths are a great way of getting out of the way texturally while providing all the necessary harmonic information <laughs> Let's add, uh, let's add a third note to those uh, voicings. So, let's look at that. On the B flat, I just added a sixth right next to the major seventh. If you've seen some of my other videos uh, in this series, I talk about how the interval of a second will automatically give you um, sort of a bigger sound. Um, and that's just science, man. <laughs> it's just, it's science, so trust me. All I added to my little skeletal se major seventh and third was a sixth here. Of course, you can invert that. And what do you got? You got fourths when you invert it. Or maybe it's the other way around. When you invert fourths, you get this. Or this. So that's really good to remember that this is actually an inverted fourth. So it's one way to look at it. Moving on to my second chord. So there I added my 13 and to my to my skeletal third and seventh. And look at that. You hear all that vibration? because my Leslie has a family of raccoons in it. But aside from that, it's just science. And so. So on my D minor, I'm adding a, an 11th right next to, again, once again, I have a second here. So that's giving me a D minor 11th with just three notes. And notice how my top note uh, is descending here. Next chord. I added to my seventh and third an E, which is a thirteenth. Again. Then another one. I added a ninth to my minor seventh. I kept this and I just moved one note and I got, I've got another 13 chord. Again, look at it in another inversion. We all know that, okay, but how often do you take your D and put it down an octave? Then we resolve on another chord that's got a, a second in it and that is our B flat major ninth, B flat major seventh ninth. Let's try a different set of voicings with the same chord progression, okay? So there, I start with a very monk-ish major seven. Um, simply 
major seven, root fifth. Okay, then I took some poetic license here, and instead of my normal seven that would normally be a, if anything, a nine or a 13, I thought, well, I wanna, I wanna have a melodic, an ascending melodic idea happening here, so I just took the liberty of making the E flat a sharp nine. Why not? Okay, because I still have some, you know, good, good voice leading happening. I got this moving down here. Okay, now again, here I'm going to keep going up, up half steps, and I could easily just play a, a minor chord, but I decided to stick with this kind of monk idea of dissonance, and I combined my suspended four with the three. Okay, again, dissonance, and that's just a, a compound minor second. And we already said that seconds are scientifically proven to improve your playing. Now, so there's a nice, there's another big wide interval, but I've got my basic third and seventh to keep, keep me warm. Again, I'm going to take the liberty of making my two a dominant, which is something you can do anytime you want, and it, it works. And then I resolve back on a, ver uh, a simple clustered, clustered uh, B flat major seven, which again, minor second. And then my turnaround, okay, three notes, 13. Flat nine, root. Nice and crunchy. So, I hope this experience was nice and crunchy for you. And, see you next time.